There he is, the scientist. Celestial navigation, mathematics, and engineering. Now, the thing about this it scientist is, the of is that there's no reason to, to not pick to him up or not use him immediately because there are no other choices. Like, either you get what he's giving you or you get nothing. So, I believe celestial navigation I haven't got, mathematics I haven't got, and engineering I haven't got. So that is going to be three genuine pickups for me. One, two, three. Mathematics gives me one movement. All naval units. God, that's useful. Um, I mean, that's awesome. I also picked up universities, I believe, as well, didn't I? Uh, astronomy. Where is it? Education. Yeah, there we go. So we've already got universities up. Very expensive building. But Babylon now has 23 production, so that's pretty cool. Golden Age for Babylon at the beginning of the game. Perfect. Now, I could use this to pick up a religion. Would religions be helpful? Well, it depends if anybody's got any to start with. Nope, no one has a religion right now, so that's relatively interesting. If I had a religion, I could get something like Feed the World. Feed the World, of course, being the best thing for healthy, giant cities. Actually, sometimes that can be a really good thing to run into. Eureka's giving you an additional 10% of tech costs. Well, hint, hint. For Babylon, that's totally pointless, so don't even bother with it. Pen, brush, and voice. Interesting. Yeah, extra culture from each special district. Monumentality means I can convert my faith in gold. I don't have any faith in gold. That is the problem. So I'm going to go for Exodus of the Evangelist. Let's pick up a religion. So I get four points per turn. In 15 turns, I'll have a religion, and hopefully the best ones will still be available. If they're not, you know, it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll think of something different to do. So as discussed before, state workforce, the first thing to do is pick up Pingala. You want him in your capital, working as hard as he can, as early as you could get him. Early Empire is fine. I'm only just picking up my monument in my capital, actually. That's a pretty late monument. Ideally, I would have liked to have picked that up a bit quicker, but those those are just the sort of uh, the things that I got particularly. Oracle was built. We didn't have the culture we needed to rush the Oracle, but that's okay. We still have decent points coming in. Mongolia is beginning to pick up some scientist points. We want to keep an eye on that. But generally speaking, we're doing okay. City number two is immediately down. Now that's a beautiful marsh tile to work. Next bit of production, extra bit of grassland. Uh, food because of the Ottoman tank. It, it, it's just wonderful. Three food, one production, two science. A yummy, 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 yummy. However, what I need to think about is the best placement now to get all of my cities working well together. Now, and just if I look at fresh water, you can see there's a lot of fresh water over in this area there. I'm going to stick a city on this desert tile, I think. Just trying to think of a yeah, let's stick one there. And you can see we can probably get a decent sort of campus placement between them. I want campuses in all of my cities, ideally. There are no reefs around me. Very few places in order to actually boost my campus adjacency here. So what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the government plaza, I think. But the government plaza are set up with two campuses will give me a fairly decent sort of chunk of adjacency. So I'm thinking actually, for instance, in the city that I'm just about to build it in, if I were to, I mean, that looks like a good campus tower because it's next to a mountain. Fine. That means it's going to be, let's have a quick think about this. That will be the government plaza and then the campus from this city and then we'll have to put a campus on this city so this is when naming gets really really important that's city two and then this is going to be um for infant down there and then that is going to be city two and that is city three like so okay simple very very simple. Um, before I build the government plaza though, we're going to get the palgam in. I think that's 320 gold. Yeah, look at that. It's not much. Waiting for people to be able to buy diplomatic favour from us. At the moment, no one's buying, but they will. But to reiterate, it's really important. You settle a city, you make sure it's on a river if you can, and the first thing you do is get a palgam. Two production, one housing, and extra food everywhere. Makes such a big difference because he also applies to the tile that the city is on. Just trust me, it's worth it. So this is a camp, actually, and thinking about it, camps are useful because camps mean Temple of Artemis, and I don't believe the Temple of Artemis has been built yet. It has not. Okay, what a good use of a tundra tile. Perfect, we'll get that down quickly. This is what I always do, though. If you've watched me play a sieve for long enough, you'll realize I'll say, oh, I need to save loads of money. And then I'll immediately buy a tile. It's just 
It's just the way I roll. I'm useless at saving money in this game, just terrible at it. So remember, with Babylon's unique unit, it counts as a warrior, so you can give it battle cry, and that is a huge bonus when clearing up barbarians. Just never forget that if you can. Who's Horseback wasted? riding has been boosted by the addition of horses in my empire. Again, strategics, always worth unlocking as soon as you can and upgrading them as soon as you can, because then you can sell them to the AI. The best thing that Babylon can get is connoisseur. You want the culture way before you want the science, because culture basically blocks governments, it blocks civics, it blocks all of the good stuff to get to the things that you really, really need to unlock quickly. And you can see actually my culture per turn has just boosted considerably. I'm on 5.8 until I reshuffle it, 12.7. Pingala is doing well. I finally have the money for a palgam. Well, bam. Lovely stuff. Artemis Temple of Artemis, my capital of Babylon, grows stronger and stronger and every Whoa, turn. Camps, pastures, plantations give me an immunity, so but more importantly I get housing and food to make this Pingala city even more sumptuous than it already was. And there it is. The first great prophet. Brilliant stuff. Can't do anything with them yet, uh, apart from I could scout with them to be fair. That would be pretty funny. Oh well, I'll kind of keep him by my capital for a little bit and then we'll, we'll roll out in a bit. Political philosophy gives me Classical Republic. Now Babylon really works well with Classical Republic because the great person points will come back to thank you later. It's very, very good. It also gives you the wildcard policy slot and we'll be going back to that in a second. Now, we've got Charismatic Leader. That's pretty good. First Envoy counts as two. It's always worth just double checking to see how many city-states you haven't got uh, envoys with so actually there's a couple here that I don't have envoys with so it is worth picking up the first envoy counts as two card we've met them all so that's fine from now urban planning is good we're gonna get builders and we're gonna get the extra production that's a good double combo for us and then after that point I think as fun as settlers are I'm not entirely sure about being you know I think it probably is better to get settlers in a second but we're gonna whip those out a little bit more later let's go for discipline still discipline still keeping us very safe indeed now the scientists mongolia is up to eight points per turn the ai especially on deity can go very heavily into great people so what we need to do is we need to boost our scientist great person points a little bit we can pick up a university that'll help but also we can go for campus research grants now that will boost us pretty quickly ideally what i want to do is boost them until we get to the medieval era. After that point, I don't really care. That's better. Two scientist points per turn. That helps just to bring them in a little bit more. So this scientist is really cool. And that's three random technologies from the classical or medieval era. That'll get to me very quickly indeed. So we like that. Pick up another culture by putting two envoys into this city-state. Lovely. There you go. There's the scientist. Enlightenment has just been boosted for me. That's great, but... And we just need to have a quick look at this. Classical or medieval era? The only classical I haven't got is currency. And I can boost currency. That is something I should be doing. Shipbuilding is a little bit more unfortunate. But build up wonders, own three arches, feudalism, aqueducts. All of these, okay, I, I can afford to let those get rushed. But there's no point on using him until I've basically got myself all of the techs that will give me stuff and you know but i don't need to rush through so this is all fine look at this another classical era this is mathematics and one random tech i already have mathematics so he's actually not one i want but let's just wait on the great scientist for now we'll rush that through quickly i was just going to build an aqueduct down in three turns follow that up with a trader time to get the government plaza down in my second city that's going to give me just the extra uh, governor slot I need to get Pingala boosted. And then we can look to get Magnus involved in that city. Military engineering boosted. Drama and poetry now done. We've got the scientist points still coming in. This is all good. But it's the engineers that I really want to focus on a little bit now as well. We want to make sure that we've got all different cards happening at the same time. Look at this. Oh, I've got so many beautiful worked tiles now. Babylon. Up to 37 production. 37! Here we go. Classical era wonder. Kill a unit with spearmen. Own three archers. Castles. Feudalism. 
There's, there's quite a few here that are unlikely to get boosted anytime soon. So there we go. Stirrups. Oh, stirrups gives us knights. Knights are useful. Machinery is a good one. Buttress is a good one. Okay, perfect. We are boosting along nicely now. Congo wants to still be my friend. So that's a good thing. Mongolia kind of doesn't really like me. Yeah, Arabia doesn't like me at all. So we'll just kind of ignore that one. Adopt a government with six inherent policy slots. Castles, I think, has got to be the one that I work. I'm building a theatre square now, quickly, though. I had a spare district, and nobody's really going for the writer points apart from Mongolia, who's literally just started to get them as soon as I mentioned that. Typical Mongolia, eh? Typical Mongolia. I'm on 23 techs, they're on 13, so I've got a huge tech lead over them. That's pretty cool. And recorded history is done as well, which means I could get the Great Library. All ancient and classical texts, this always happens. I've totally finished them. So really it's kind of like, is it worth getting? It gives me another great writer point and it gives me another great scientist point. So it could give me a little bit of stuff, but as wonders go, it's not the most useful for me at all. There's Grants, by the way. So Pingala's now getting double great people into my capital. Double, I say, ha ha. So we're up to 4.6 engineer points, 5.7 writer points, eight scientist points. Good, this is, this is wonderful. This is wonderful indeed. Now I could get two culture, for, a 2% culture for every great person I've ever earned, or I can pick my apostles. I think I'd rather go for this. Let's have a quick look and see what's going on over here. Oh, okay, okay, the AI is doing okay. Now, one of the Babylon strategies you can pull off is effectively a rush with upgraded city-state units. You can see Arabia have 39 strength walls. So what I would do is I would levy military for 180 and then I'd save up some resources and say, okay, well, I've actually unlocked men at arms, for instance. Let's have a quick look at them. There they are, 45 strength. So they would be pretty powerful. Uh, build an armory for gunpowder. That would be something that I could do. So I could go all the way to gunpowder if I've unlocked that. I think I know where it is. I don't think I've upgraded any nitre though. Oh yeah, there's nitre over on these sort of areas. So that could be it. We could go for like a musket rush by buying city-state units and going wa-boom and just attacking. So we'll keep that in mind. It involves saving up a bit of gold. It involves getting an armory. Armories are very important to get. There's a government plaza actually. We've done that now. Pingala, that's all you needed to do. Let's now get Magnus into my second city and we can get going from there. Mm -hmm. Military tactics Locks and castles I just got from a tribal hut. Goodness me. Well, that's that's useful. Perfect stuff. Okay, well, in that case, build two harbors for cartography is probably quite a good one. Build two universities I'm going to do relatively soon as well. What's the worst thing? Have the guild civic. Ugh, let's do that. Let's get that one in. Actually, yeah, then I could do the same sort of thing with how many units have they got? They've got a single swordsman and they're being attacked by barbs. Okay, well, this, this city here is really annoying because it's kind of where I wanted to build a unit and that's not a river city for me. So yeah, a bit frustrating that. World's first circumnavigation. The tips, they don't quite touch, but they almost do. It's kind of exciting to find out, really. There's a settlement. It says that it's an aggressive city placement, but honestly, Mongolia settled near me. That's what I'm maintaining in this situation. Palgum immediately in. Renaming done. Okay, so far, so good on this city. I think the first and best thing to do is probably to get a builder in, as we did on the other city. But if we can get the population of the city nice and high very quickly, I can start heaping on loyalty pressure on this city. Provision is now set up in Magnus. Okay, so we should be able to start getting settlers from this city as quickly as we want. That's a good thing. Dream. There is We're the great library. It's looking good. We it's looking tasty. It gives me a couple of extra slots for great writers. And I think lost. that was the main reason for building it. Just to make sure my capital had enough culture to keep spreading its beautiful wings. We are now on 70 era score and we have two turns to get six more. Uh, there is a great writer. Actually, that's pretty good. That gives me one era score. And then I can use some faith to get this great engineer. Perfect. Imhotep. Oh, yes. Imhotep's always the one we would like to see. Okay, that's good. That's a really, really good pickup for us. Let's go and just stick you in quickly. Light so, four era score in two turns. Actually, this is a good idea. So, I'm going to pull Arabia into a joint war with Mongolia. I'm then going to see Congo. Do you want to join in with this war? No, they really don't want to. That's fine. But we're now in a, for a war with Mongolia. Now, I don't have too much army, but I do have Yerevan. I do have Yerevan. Kublai, 
could possibly steal this, but if I just pay 160 gold, that is an army on the borders. So that is two era score very quickly. Uh, I could also get myself in this city state. The Congo is killing this city state, so that's that's a bit annoying. Never mind. But actually, this is the perfect time for it. Feudal Contract is about to help me to build melee, anti-cavalry, and ranged units really quickly. And I can already build men-at-arms and pikemen super quickly. So what we're going to do, I'm just waiting on my extra building in the government plaza, but I'm going to stick the warlords thrown in. We're going to use Babylon's tech advantage to get a bit of a crazy domination play here. There's a knight that'll take five turns. That'll give me a 50 melee strength uh, unit. And then I'll go after that point for some actual units like pikemen are a really good option for us. I know, mean, screw it. It's only 60 gold. It's only 60 gold. If I levy it, that gives me one era score. So I need just one more now. Just a single era score more. Now, I literally can't find another era score. I've spent about 10 minutes looking through and I am totally at a loss. I don't have a city on the coast or near any water, so I can't build a boat. No one has any more gold to trade with me, so I can't rush through this scientist, which is very frustrating. Oh, one off. One off. That is so frustrating. I didn't put my religion down. There's so many ways I could have done that. There are so many ways I could have done that. And actually, look, that city state's now dead as well, so that's, that's gone as well. Okay, my scouts are going to die. That is a normal age. Oh, you know what? Never mind, we'll see what Mongolia gets. This will be a good indication of how difficult we're going to find this one. They're in a golden age. Okay, not so good. Not so good. Era score every time I get a Eureka, it's got to be that one. It's got to be that one. I'm getting too many Eurekas right now. It's pretty decent. Now, first step, actually, is to try and defeat and kill this city. It's in the wrong place. We want to settle over here on the river. River settlements are super important for us, super important. I'd love it if we can build units faster, and I'd love it if city centre buildings were quicker to build as well. Good combination for me. Yes, perfect. Okay, good. That means I'm building units. I'm building pikemen in one turn. That's awesome. Great. Two random technologies and inspiration from the medieval and renaissance eras. Perfect. Okay, well, okay, this scientist is a healing scientist. That would have been quite handy, but not for me right now to medieval or renaissance let's have a quick look and see what we're doing uh, medieval we did everything renaissance is there anything we can do own two crossbows build two universities build a university next to a mountain there's actually stuff so we're just going to hold off on this one for now next up we've got black marketeer in the magna city now this is really really good yes granaries and monuments are really fantastic but my production is awesome and being able to pick up men at arms for like no production whatsoever is a really, really cool thing. I've already gone from about 80 military strength to 200 in the space of two turns. This is, yeah, we're growing, we're growing quick. We're growing really, really quick. And look, already this city is going to fall very rapidly indeed. In fact, men at arms is good, but let's just get a siege tower in as well, because I just, I expect them to build walls pretty soon. Yep, look at that. Walls immediately went down as soon as I did damage to the city. It's always the same. Always the same. Always too late, but always the same. So as discussed, that city was easily taken and will be raised because I want a city over here. This city, however, is a bit different. I'm just going to hold my scouting units on the borders. If I can run in from behind and distract them, it could be a lot of fun. If there is natural, metal casting, by the way, because I've been building some sneaky crossbows in my capital. I own two of them now. So now I've got pike and shots. Actually, pike and shots are even better. Although I might have just screwed myself over there. Late Renaissance era unit, and I believe... No, I, yeah, Feudal Contract does do Renaissance units. Okay, perfect. So, I can still build pike and shots at half the price. Perfect, 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 perfect. That's really good. How much is an upgrade? 150. Oh, this is great. Changing governments quickly to pick up oligarchy. I need Feudal Contract, but I also need Conscription pretty badly, because... I have no money and raid so I can pillage all the money that I can get. Serfdom is a useful card, but urban planning is even more useful right now. So as you can see, we shot right up to Pike and Shot by going through the sort of military tactics branch. Unfortunately, in order to go further, you need to go to chemistry. And this involves having a level two alliance. But there is a scientist that does it. I think it's Mendelev. He will give you the boost that you need. That's a heavy chariot that died. Ignore that. That was just a, that was just a foolish little play that I was doing whilst I was moving units around. Uh, I'm just bringing some units into 
their cities now because I fancy doing some pillaging. Bringing the Pike and Shah up with the Siege Tower. Okay, perfect. Now we can start to do some damage against the city. If I just move that unit into... Oh, that said it could cross the river. Totally rubbish, that one. Okay, never mind. We'll get the Manor Arms to be stood there. I've got reinforcements on the way. Building lots and lots and lots of units and they are all coming with a pretty decent little surge of units. I'm, I'm hoping this should be fine, but Kaukia Mounds I can put in now. That'll give some more housing and amenities for a city, but I think right now, the most important thing to do is to get the farms down. Now, actually no, in saying that, we'll get the, get the mound down. A little bit of gold. I need all the gold I can get, being fair. Right, the main strategy with these cities is normally just to rush through them. That's already half, half killed. If I can just bust through, and take over the city quickly. That'll be pretty much their entire defenses taken out in this area, and their units will just end up backing off really quickly. In fact, actually, this man at arms is the perfect unit for me because I can throw it into the city and kill it, which means that I can now move the pike and shot in and go one attack, two attack like that. The city's now mine. It was a bit of a sacrifice play, but it worked well. So they've gone for a military emergency against me. I'm intrigued. Perfect, that's gone through. That's actually a really good thing for me because that gives that city 20 loyalty per turn. So I'm actually going to be able to use that as a permanent holding ground for myself. I am now at war with Arabia, but Arabia are not so problematic, really. Industrialization has urban. been finished because in the meantime, I've been building a lovely workshop in my second city. So that's really cool. That means that now my mines have two bonus production, I believe. But I've also now got the option to build factories, which make a huge difference. The commercial hub is going up in my capital to try and stop my cities from losing too much money. It makes a big difference if I can pull that one off. And I think commercial hubs and aqueducts and things. I and mean, all of these things are brilliant to build in all of my cities. To be fair, let's get another builder or two whilst we're running on that one. I'm just spending a turn or two just consolidating my strength. Making sure that my units are all pushing forward, killing archers, getting rid of some of the support units. They're doing quite well, really. Magnus, go back to this city. That's great because I've now got Victor involved and Victor is superior at military combat. So that'll make my city a little bit stronger. But if I give him one promotion and give him Garrison Commander, you'll see he gets the plus five combat strength in all of the units defending the city's territory. It makes a big difference. It also gives plus four loyalty per turn to all cities or all other cities within nine tiles. So if I start taking other Mongolian cities, I'll be able to hold on to them a lot easier. So in good news for Mongolia, they've got their unique unit. In bad news, it did 15 damage against my Pike and Shot, which is now just cruising up to it and has now almost one hit it. So, you know, I like the idea of what they're doing. <laughs> their unique units are a lot of fun, but they're, they're not very effective. They're uniquely ineffective, you could say. Or ineffective, I guess would be the better way of putting that. Never mind. Right, okay, so this war is, it's turn 109, this war's doing Not okay. Long. So far, we've got a good grip into Mongolia. They are fighting back, but they just don't have the strength of army. Their units are very much out of date compared to mine. Well, I, I say that, I'm just so far, I'm just so far ahead of where they should be technologically that it's just, it's making it a lot easier for me. But I've now also got a cavalry. So if I get a kill the cavalry, I believe that is something relatively fun, is it not? No, it was to unlock cavalry. That's it, kill the knight, unlocks the cavalry. Okay, good, well that's 62 strength. That's a really powerful unit and it's a really good raiding unit. So we'll continue to do that. Whilst the World Congress is still helping me out, I believe the best thing to do is to continue getting things like pike and shots. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're relatively near the front line there. I've got cavalries being built, I've got factories being built. My industry is doing well behind the scenes. I'm just sort of making sure that it's all doing okay going forward. Oh, crossbow just got Navy. almost entirely destroyed in one hit by their unique units. Okay, the crossbows very much need to wait behind the scenes, I think. Imhotep, okay, he can accelerate through two ancient or classical era wonders, which will be pretty decent. Just trying to get my gold positive quickly. It's taking a bit longer to do than I had hoped it would. New era of the World Congress. And you can see that again, we can choose building units cheaper, which I'm going to do. And I quite like it if I could culture bomb 
because I can use that to my advantage up on the front line. Yeah, perfect. That's really, really cool. Thinking about it, actually, I could crossbow, and then I could put an encampment down on this tile. That would culture bomb, boom, 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 all those tiles. That would be pretty handy indeed. Just got rifling because I've now got niter into my empire, but that's good. That's a good first step. I was just waiting to do that because I have unlocked line inventory, and my goodness, line inventory would be very very helpful on the front line. So I've just started with coal power in my capital. It's already up to 70 production, but that could go even higher. And you can see we're now starting to really eat into the great engineers. It's good. Isaac Newton builds a university in a city, which would be great for my capital and then gives the universities extra science. The infrastructure is coming in. This war is costly and it's not very effective because unfortunately Mongolia is just very tough and very good at spamming units. But we are doing well. We are getting there slowly. Oh, that's a bad place to leave a unit. That is a very bad place indeed. There it is. Newton, you need to get into the city nice and quickly and thank you. There's an extra scientist point coming in. Uh, is this a good time to do this one now? Medieval and Renaissance era. Uh, we've now got medieval and renaissance. Yeah, no, this is the perfect time. Right, you pop in. It's not the time Square the rigging gunpowder, both boosted. Great stuff. I'm pretty sure Yerevan is now dead. Yes, that's fine though. We didn't really need Yerevan. They All kind of distracted glistened. Mongolia's main army for a number of turns, making it much easier for me to advance. So that I'll take. I will take. Garrison commander, as described before. Just makes defending the city a little bit easier. Here we go. I finally got a cavalry unit into their... Oh, right, right into their empire. And we're going to start to get a lot of extra gold as I build up some niter, which I should be doing, hopefully, because I, sh I do have niter in my empire. Oh, for goodness sake, look, it's done it again. They've settled right where I was going to. But luckily for me, I just switched it away from a culture alliance. So... They're going to lose that city really quickly. Where else shall I settle then? I need another river that's pretty good. Okay, well, actually, let's go back to plan one. That was a pretty good plan. But my first merchant, I believe it's going to get pretty difficult from this point on. Yeah, medieval merchants gain extra gold. That's fine. Now, interestingly enough, Mongolia has just gone into a dark age and we're in a golden age. So this is fantastic for me. What golden age do I want, however? Now, not having my trade as plundered is quite exciting. Exodus of the Evangelists gives me an opportunity to spread my religion around a little bit, which I've got an opportunity to do. I'm just about to found that. That would be handy. Monumentality lets me move my builders around a little bit. Uh, let's actually have a look at the continent split. What's it looking like? Oh, it's literally just halfway down the map. Okay, so everything that I'm going to do is probably going to end up being on the same continent. So that's probably not very exciting. Hexantraconus, I just don't have many trade routes. So it's either Monumentality or Exodus of the Evangelists. Now, I'm actually thinking nobody has put down a religion yet. Because of that, I'm not going for a religious win because I just think the game would be a little bit broken. But I can put Crusade down. So let's go Exodus. I think that's going to be useful. I quite like that one. I've got a spy being kicked out. I'm just about to get printing that'll get me some more diplomatic visibility over Mongolia. Look at this horrible border gore. Using that great merchant, I managed to go boom, 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 boom and steal this nighter tile. So as soon as that Congo city flips, I can take it. That's great. But until then, I can still be getting the nighter. I'm just a couple of line inventory away from being able to roll Mongolia over. Trust me. It's not far away now. I'm losing units here and there. So my war weariness is looking fairly tragic, but the main thing is that this city is fully loyal because I have the military emergency, so it doesn't make a difference. So when fighting Mongolia, even though my units are technologically superior, you've got to make sure you have diplomatic visibility, especially Mongolia. They are very good at that. So I'm going to send my spy over to this city, which is the further city away. It doesn't matter which city you send it to. I'm going to run the project that gives me more visibility. Now, combined with printing, which I should be picking up very soon, you'll see that I should start to get like a plus three or a plus six combat strength over Mongolia, which makes a big difference. Big difference. Okay, printing is done. I've now got, yeah, plus three intel on opponent's movements. It's just a small, it's a small bonus, but it is a bonus that works very well. We just picked up steam power, which gives me railroads, which is a brilliant thing for me, actually. Let's get for thoughts, privateers, enlightenment, enlightenment, that's a difficult one to get, but railroads of Babylon. 
Yeah, that's that's strong. That's really strong. Let's you get units from the front line to the uh, to the back line within a couple of turns. I'm actually going to change governments quickly to monarchy. This will give me um, Republican legacy. It's probably not the one I wanted, but uh, feudal contract. Get rid of that. Stick in chivalry. Perfect. Raid is still a good card. Urban planning is still a very good card. Merchant confederation is even better. But what that means now is that my, my cities that are generating units, I can combine with the cavalry cuts. That's eight, eight, oh, eight turns to get a cavalry. Four turns and a cavalry there. These things just, they, they do so much damage. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Matthew Wilkinson, Salty Tech, Davalex, Doughboy91, Truffa Askby, Paul Coffey, Kroger Brand Trail Mix, Alex Noob, Cinnamon Beard, Portland, Petra Ryan, Matthew Hatch, and Nim for all of your support, as well as everybody else who engages with the video and helps me to defeat the algorithm. Thank you so much. See you next time.